it's no more Mr. Nice Guy. It's uh, I get in there and I try to finish fights. If he opens space, I'm gonna submit him. This is my goal, finish the fight. I have more heart, I'm hungrier, I have more determination. I'm gonna knock Gabe out and I'm gonna show the world who I am. I'm gonna punch him, I'm gonna kick him, and I'm gonna win this fight in a spectacular way. It's gonna be a long, bloody, sweaty, kind of, let's see who's tougher fight, and that's what I'm here for. I, I just wanna see, may the tougher guy win, and, and that's always gonna be me. I never worry about how dangerous my opponent is. I'm scared about how dangerous I am. I'm gonna be Quentin, it's not gonna be any upset, it's not gonna be any shock, I belong here. I see Jardine as a, as a guy that's in a way for me to get my belt back. I'm trying to play him to sleep. today. Quentin Rampage Jackson coming off what has to be the most satisfying victory of his MMA career, the knockout of Vanderlei Silva. And coming into tonight, Rampage knows he is one win away from having another shot at becoming the UFC light heavyweight champion again. My partner is always Joe Rogan, of course, standing in Rampage's way is the Dean of Mean Keith Jardine. But speaking of Quentin Rampage Jackson, Wow, was he good against Vanderlei. Oh, he was phenomenal against Vanderlei, and it was sweet revenge for him because Vanderlei had stopped him in his two previous bouts with him. You know, but Keith Jardine represents a very unusual challenge. He's an unorthodox fighter. He has one tool that Rampage has a weakness for, yep. and that is the leg kicks. He's got outstanding leg kicks. He's got weird movement. He's very difficult to time, and he comes from a fantastic camp with Greg Jackson and Rashad Evans and all those great guys, George St. Pierre. So he's very well prepared, and it's a big challenge for Rampage tonight. Joe, I think a lot of people wondered how Rampage would respond to losing the title to Forrest and then traveling overseas and training in the UK. He's responded very well. He looks as good as ever. Yeah, well, he's had some widely publicized personal problems. And of course, you know, Rampage Jackson has always been known for his dynamic power. And he's really tightened up his striking, working with the Wolf Slayer. There you see the knockout over Vandalay. He's an outstanding puncher. Doesn't throw too many kicks, but his punches and his slams are outstanding. Keith Jardine, very unorthodox. I mean, he gave Chuck Liddell fits. He beat Brandon Bear in his last fight. He's on a uh, he's on a roll right now, and like I said, a very difficult fighter to time. 
The way in yesterday certainly brought some entertainment. Both are excited to be in the main event of the evening tonight. And speaking of the main event, fans, you can vote on who you think will win tonight's light heavyweight fight between Rampage Jackson and Keith Jardine. You can vote online at UFC.com or on your cell phone by texting one for Rampage, two for Jardine to 88222. We'll keep you updated of your vote all night long. Our text voting all evening tonight will be brought to you by Tap Out. So Jackson and Jardine take center stage, but not far behind is a heavyweight showcase between Shane Carwin, 10 and 0 in his mixed martial arts career, and former top contender Gabriel Gonzaga. Well, this is Shane Carwin's coming out party. Yes. Most of the people on the inside of MMA think that this guy is the next big thing, but he's got to get past this big thing. Gabriel Gonzaga is a beast. He's a Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt and world champion on the ground, and he's got excellent striking himself. Shane Carwin, he is an all-American wrestler with big, big power in his hands, and his ground and pound sounds like an earthquake. It is another night in which we are gonna rock the Midwest. Nationwide Arena sold out in Columbus, Ohio, and also on the card, a matchup of two very ultra-talented wrestlers. UFC veteran Matt the Hammer Hamill, a powerhouse wrestler with vicious ground and pound, and he's taking on another powerhouse wrestler and former Division I national wrestling champion, Mark Munoz. And in the welterweight division, Pete Drago Sell, making the move down to 170, a much better weight class for him, very good jiu-jitsu, taking on Matt the Immortal Brown. Excellent submissions and a very strong mind. Our rules of the octagon are brought to you by Tap Out, an expression of combat known worldwide. Now available at tapout.com. Three judges will score the bout. All the bouts tonight are scheduled for three five-minute rounds. A 10-point must scoring system is in effect with the round winner gaining 10 points, his opponent nine or less, based on effective striking, grappling, aggression, and octagon control. Tonight's UFC 96 presented by the only motorcycles worthy of being in the octagon Harley Davidson is available in high definition. We begin in the lightweight division as Gray Maynard looks to bully Jim Miller in a battle of two rapidly rising contenders in the UFC's 155 pound division. Gray Maynard and Jim Miller are two of the most promising lightweights in the game today, and both have yet to taste defeat in the octagon. Tonight, one of them will find out what life on the other side of the win-loss column is like. I have a, a knack for making guys look bad, look like they're having an off night, and uh, don't see anything that Gray brings to the table that's gonna stop that. Whatever Jim has, it's not gonna compare to my camp, not gonna compare to the gym that I train at, and tonight, it's gonna show. Unbeaten in his last eight fights, New Jersey's Jim Miller cemented his place amongst the top up-and-comers at 155 pounds with UFC wins over David Barron and Matt Wyman last year. Yet despite his run of success, the 25-year-old ground-fighting ace is far from satisfied. So expect his best when the bell rings tonight against Gray Maynard. Gray's not gonna bully him around the octagon. I'm bigger than he is, I'm gonna push him around. If he tries to lay on me and eke out a decision, I'm gonna sub him out. The names dotting Gray Maynard's UFC resume are impressive, with Dennis Seaver, Frankie Edgar, and Rich Clemente all going down at the hands of the bully in 2008. But the three-time Division I All-American wrestler is ready for prime time in the most talent-rich division in mixed martial arts. And his quest to make it to the next level begins tonight. I wanna prove to everybody, including Jim, that I can end him, so he's gonna get his ass knocked out. Well, all the Miller brothers have done since they have entered the UFC is go a combined 5-0 and oh with three submissions. Jim Miller is 2-0, and oh, looking for his third UFC win tonight. 13-1 and one overall in his mixed martial arts career. And what a five-month ride it has been 
for the younger brother, Jim Miller. Yeah, both of the Miller brothers, I mean, they're both a couple of savages. I had heard about them before. They've been fighting at smaller shows and making a lot of noise, and it's it's great to see them in the octagon. You see their Brazilian jiu-jitsu brown belt. I mean, Jim looked really awesome against Matt Wyman in his last fight, took that fight on short notice, and uh, put on a very impressive performance against a dangerous guy in Matt Wyman. He's got great cardio. He, he has keeps a great pace, excellent ground skills, good striking as well, and just a gamer. The kid's very good. Nine wins by submission. An eight-fight winning streak Jim Miller brings into the octagon here tonight. Now, ironically, his only professional loss is the current lightweight standout, Frankie Edgar. That was a couple of years ago, though, Joe, in 06. Bray Maynard, speaking common opponents, has defeated and dominated Frankie Edgar. Again, though, that was three years ago. Yeah, this a lot has changed since then for both guys, and this is a really interesting matchup. I'm looking forward to it. Coming off a of fight of the night performance, a fight in which he took on three weeks' notice, Jim Miller set to start things off against Maynard tonight. Well, he was born in Phoenix, Arizona, Joe, but this man spent a lot of time here in the state of Ohio. And you see on his shirt right there, that's his high school, St. Edwards High School the west side of Cleveland, a powerhouse in wrestling since even I was in high school in Cleveland about 25 years ago. So he's got a little look back to his high school roots in Cleveland, the St. Edwards Eagles, who are still the top wrestling team here in the state of Ohio. And he wants to really perform well in front of a lot of family and friends here tonight. Absolutely, including his family and friends and extreme couture that you see behind him right there. Randy Couture. Jay Aaron, you know, really tough guys right there. He trains with Extreme Couture. He's got a great wrestling base, as you said. Big power. He's got heavy hands and a very strong guy. Really good at controlling guys on the ground and dominating position. Did that with Frankie Edgar. Did that with Rich Clemente. He's got a world of experience in the octagon against some really tough guys. And um, this is a real exciting fight. By the way, in hockey, though, in high school, we kicked the butt of St. Ed's on frequent occasion. Live off those memories, baby. Got to, got to. Set for our first fight of the night in the lightweight division, and a good one. Gray Maynard, unbeaten in his mixed martial arts career against Jim Miller, unbeaten during his time here in the UFC. For this first fight of the night, it's brought to you by the only motorcycles worthy of being in the octagon, Harley Davidson. Maynard, 29 years old, four years the elder of New Jersey, born and raised Jim Miller, both 5'8", and it is Miller who will have a slight reach advantage. It is time to get UFC 96 officially underway, and with that, here is the veteran voice of the octagon, Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, we are live from the Nationwide Arena in Columbus, Ohio for UFC 96, presented by Harley Davidson. And now, it's time to begin our first bout of the evening. Three rounds in the UFC lightweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a wrestler and jiu-jitsu fighter, holding a professional record of 13 wins with one loss. He stands five feet, eight inches tall, weighing in at 154 and one half pounds. Fighting out of Whippany, New Jersey, Jim Miller! And now introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner, a wrestler holding a professional record of seven wins with no losses and one no contest. He stands five feet, eight inches tall, weighing in at 155 pounds. Fighting out of Las Vegas, Nevada, Gray, the bully, Maynard! And when the action begins, our referee in charge of this contest is Dan Mergliata. Dan Mergliata, our referee. Set for the first fight of the night, the beautiful Ariani, Edith, Logan. Back here, third straight year, Nationwide Arena, Columbus, Ohio. 
The high school standout at St. Edwards High School, the three-time All-American at Michigan State, against uh, fight. Jim Miller in the first round of this fight is brought to you by FullTiltPoker.net, where you can learn, chat, and play with the pros. White trunks for Miller Joe, black trunks for Gray Maynard. Miller, the southpaw. Maynard coming off a good win in Chicago over Rich Clemente. Looking for head movement at the corner of Jim Miller. Miller's attacking. Got the clinch. It'll be tough to take Gray Maynard to the ground. No question. Two-time state champion, high school national champion at St. Edwards, and a three-time Division I All-American, as I mentioned, with the Spartans, college roommate of light heavyweight champion Rashad Evans. And really importantly, his wrestling has translated very well into mixed martial arts. He's excellent point. at transitions between punches, clinches, and takedowns. And he's got a solid chin Watch as well. Boy. Inside thigh, watch him roll. Gifted athlete with a huge right hand, Gray Maynard. Just a tough New Jersey kid and extremely talented as well, Jim Miller. And if I had a guess as to what Ray Maynard's strategy would be for this fight, it might be keep this fight standing. He's got very heavy hands. He's got good boxing. He's got one excellent knockout in his UFC career against Joe Barris. Ducks underneath nicely, throws the combination. He's, he's shown some really excellent improvement in his striking since his first times on The Ultimate Fighter. Well, all those wrestlers, if you will, in Extreme Couture can throw the hands, can't they? Yeah, and I've heard some horror stories about the wars those guys go through. Oh, oh nice straight right. Very nice. And Miller that's what I'm shakes it up, about. though, yep. Set it up nicely. And the way he set it up, I mean, the, the technique wasn't wild and wing. It was straight down the pipe. Nice Good body, body shot by Miller. Miller gets the single. He's got a hold of it. You know, it's just so hard to take Maynard down. Unbelievable balance. And he threw some punches and tried to punish Miller on the way. Great balance and great strength in the legs as well. And look at this. And he's eating some shots here. Some Big nice time. uppercuts as, Mil as Maynard spins around. Wow. Beautiful takedown defense by Gray Maynard. But Miller is a dog. You know, he's on him. He's not giving up. Finally had a full he's, training camp, full notice. He's bloodied up. Yeah, he's bleeding badly from his nose, and he's wincing, which, you know, he might have a broken nose there, Mike. And that Could was the result. Him. Yeah, and but yeah. the result, Joe, of the shots that were delivered while he was trying to take down Gray Maynard. Yeah, those beautiful uppercuts from the single. One leg on the ground, throwing vicious uppercuts. I mean, this sport is evolving so much. I mean, these guys have such great, not just great takedown defense, but they're offensive while they're defending, you know? And that's that's huge. The chance to do damage while your opponent is trying to take you down is giant. Still can't get it. Miller is just relentless. He keeps trying. High school state championships here in Ohio, ironically, are this weekend. Along now, with the Arnold Classic. Now, this nose that's pouring blood right now is going to affect his breathing. You don't know if it's broken, but even if it's not broken, if blood's pouring out of it, it's very hard to breathe through your nose, which makes you open your mouth while you're breathing, which can affect your ability to take a punch. Yeah, he Working, took some yeah, punches. His eyes time. swollen. Yep. Just over a minute remains in round one. Fight scheduled for three five-minute rounds. And that's what, when we're talking about the heavy hands of Gray Maynard because, you know, he didn't, he was, didn't even have two feet on the ground he did that damage. The big scoring shot here in round one for Miller has been that kick to the body. Yeah, man, his face well, you, you, is Joe, look, look at how much he's breathing out of his mouth because exactly. of the damage to the nose. Exactly. His mouth is wide open right now. And if he gets caught with his mouth wide open, that's the easiest way to get your jaw broken. Maynard is comfortable. Looking for the kick again, though, is Miller. Hands up, the call from the corner of Gray Maynard. Miller is in a real tough spot here because, you know, he's taking all these punches and takes a shot right there. He's not doing that well on his feet except for those strikes, that one uh, kick that he landed. 
and every time he goes to take Maynard down, he gets pounded. And Joe, as you mentioned, oh, Maynard big catches shot him at Maynard. Maynard. Final seconds of the round, though. Great, great first round for Gray Maynard. And he not one time thought about taking this fight to the ground. Yeah, yeah as, as I said early in the fight, I think that's the strategy. Water, 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 water. Thanks. Here, Daniel, here. Jimmy, he's throwing that two. He's loading that two up. You know what to do, baby. Stay to the outside, Jimmy. Get this and put it in the other nose. We gotta bring that to the here. All right, Jimmy, take your time. Let's take a look at the punching power of Gray Maynard. Look at this beautiful straight right. Here it is again. This excellent technique. Straight down the pipe and a nice little body shot afterwards. But the real damage in that fight was done from Miller's attempt to take down. Gray Maynard hopping around on one leg threw some vicious punches to Miller's face. And that did a lot of the damage. Gray Maynard was the top pick of B.J. Penn's team on season five of The Ultimate Fighter. You ready? Years you ready? ago, he Let's helped B.J. Penn train for his fight against Rodrigo Gracie. But he did say Maynard that, hey, I love B.J., I respect him, but if I can get to that point, and it, you know, depending on what happens with Kenny Florian, et cetera, said, I'll fight B.J. Penn for the title. But that's looking way ahead. B.J. Penn here tonight with a couple of his fine Hawaiian fighters, Shane Nelson and Kendall Grove. Again, attacking his Maynard, the bully. Fired up to be fighting here in Ohio. Good foot movement, Joe. Maynard is really looking for that straight right hand. You know, that is uh, the preferred weapon against the southpaw boxer. And as Miller stands in that stance, as he moves forward, he does open himself up for that straight right. He does drop the left hand as Ray Maynard a little bit. Could be the victim of a lead right hook of Jim Miller. Let's see. Now he's got the hand up. Nice leg kick. Good right hand there. Right after you said it. Nice change of levels. So far, no kicks thrown by Maynard either. He just is looking to stay on his feet and box. The Hall of Famer, the natural Randy Couture in the corner of Gray Maynard. Jab up and come, Gray, jab up and come. You know what? If if you know if Miller's gonna look at it this way, if Maynard is not interested in taking him to the ground, these are free leg kicks. Great Stay point. on the outside, throw those kicks. Of course, it was about two years ago, Joe, that Randy Couture came back right here in this building, electrified everybody in attendance. Winning the heavyweight shots. title against Tim Sylvia. Nice body shots there by Maynard. If I was in Miller's corner, I would be taking that into consideration. It doesn't look like he's trying to take him down at all. Throw some kicks. Throw them all. Three minutes. Fake with the hands and throw those leg kicks. There it is there it again. Is. Nice. nice. Caught, caught him a little bit, though. Okay. Hey, one more time, take the point away. One he's more time. He's low. All right, last warning. You know, I'd like to see that in the replay. That looked like an inside leg. I mean, yeah, and great kind of great kind of move down to change levels. Looked like he was trying to punish the body. That's so smart move by Miller, though. After a couple of low kicks, he said, "All right, well, if you're thinking about it, I'll try to go for the head." The inside leg kick is always a tricky one. I mean, we've seen more low low blows from that kick than any other. Nice change of levels again. Power by Maynard. Gray's bringing it down and throwing to the body. The Miller brothers join the Hughes, Sarah, Lozon, Diaz, and Shamrock brothers as tandems that have performed inside the octagon over the years. They're looking for Jim to circle to the right, Joe. Jim's face is busted up big time. He shoots again, and, and this is going to get punished. Yeah, he's tucking his head in this time, doing a much better job. I like to see Miller pull guard here. And there he goes. He does. Nice. Nice. Oh, slippery. Gray Maynard pulls right out of it. You know what? Gray Maynard's a big 55, too, Joe. That's a powerful dude. Yeah, and that was the problem in the Frankie Edgar fight. Yep. He, he really outsized him. Miller bleeding even more now. 
You know, I mean, that's a, a part of this sport is the ability to make that weight cut, be as big as you can for your division. And Maynard is a real solid 55. And his conditioning has never been, has never been doubted. You know, I mean, that's the thing that we always harp on about wrestlers. They have the best work ethic, and, you know, I think in the sport, the wrestlers really, a lot of them overtrain. I mean, they're just, they're just savages, and they get so used to that. They're so used to that incredible pace they put on in the, in the wrestling room. It's just, it's a natural transition to become a well-conditioned MMA athlete. Tonight, we are in Columbus. Next month, back at the Bell Center, Montreal, Quebec, Canada. UFC 97 is sold out, available only on pay-per-view. Anderson Silva defending his title that night. Chuck Liddell back in the octagon. Maynard, Final 30 seconds of round two. Maynard landing shots and not taking very many. I mean, he's dishing out most of the punishment in this fight, except for the leg kicks. And if you're Jim Miller, you know that you'd still like to take the fight down, but the problem is, is every time you've attempted to take down, you have gotten rocked. Yeah. Miller's gonna let the hands go, though, Joe. Now he's game, like I said. I mean, no he's question. Straight forward, face busted up, not backing down an inch. Just a tough Jersey kid. His, he's, wow, he's bleeding bad now. His face is a mess. This is it. You Come on, Jimmy. This is fucking this is your round. <coughs> Come on, Jimmy. Gotta put it on him, Jimmy. You have five fucking minutes. Ah. You have five minutes. Danny, tell right? him about the kick. Danny, tell him about the kick. You throw that kick. Don't worry about getting kicked out. If he takes, if Jimmy, if he takes you down, he's in your world, Jimmy. Okay. Jimmy, he doesn't want anything to do with you on the ground. You've got to get him to the ground because he doesn't want to go. He stood up. Go after him, Jimmy. Now, here's what we, you talked about earlier. Maynard was changing levels for a body shot when Miller threw that kick, and that's the one that landed low. It definitely landed low, but I don't think it was on purpose. And here's a beautiful combination by Gray Maynard. Just nice body shots as well. He really mixes it up, head and body. This is mostly, for, for Maynard, been a boxing match with takedown defense. Yep. And what have you said before? A great wrestler can dictate where the fight takes place. It's such a huge advantage, the ability to decide where it goes. And believe me, if Maynard wanted this fight to the ground, he could take it there. Matt let's Hughes go, let's run, guys. You ready? You put ready? himself in the UFC fight. Hall of Fame somewhere down the road with the ability to control where the fight took place. And that is one of George St. Pierre's big strengths as well. Final round, first fight of the night, lightweight division. Miller in the white trunks, Maynard in the black trunks. So many guys that we think of as strikers, really one of the reasons why they're so successful as strikers is because they can choose to keep the fight standing up. Chuck Liddell. Chuck Liddell, Rashad Evans now. I mean, it's crazy. Rashad's now considered a dangerous, devastating striker. Yep. And again, that powerful wrestling base. It's just the best base to start out with. Why did Chuck knock everybody out? Because they weren't able to take him down. Exactly. 420 remains. Miller's just got to swing for the fences, huh? It's kind of interesting how you know, wrestling was always regarded as a sport. And then karate and all these other things were mixed martial arts, was martial arts. But now, wrestling is recognized as one of the most effective martial arts. Well, certainly mixed martial arts itself has given wrestlers an outlet to, to grow some fame and fortune. Yeah, that's a, an amazing part of it. So many of these guys would be, you know, gold medal winners, and they'd go work at Home Depot. Yep. And now, you know, they have a professional outlet. Good oh, straight good right, right. again by Maynard. He was looking for it again, Joe. And again. Good footwork as well by Maynard. Yep. Good body kick by Miller. You hear his corner screaming out again, again. 318 left in the fight. Looking for the Superman punch. Miller's right in this, and he's definitely behind he's on trying points, to but take it to the ground. Yeah, I mean, he's right in it, and the fact that he ain't going anywhere, Joe. <laughs> Look at this. Maynard decides to take it to the ground. And what did you say before? Exactly. If he wanted to, he would, and he has. Exactly. And now he is billing, being his nickname. He is the bully. And Jim he Miller does it with relative leg, ease. Though. He's got to be careful. He's getting going for a knee. He's going to turn around behind his ankle. Oh, nice escape by Maynard. Now, I 
wonder if that means Maynard will hesitate to go to the ground again. Well, Miller had his leg extended there. That was like at step seven in a 10-step process of tapping him. 217. Miller again goes for the takedown. Should pull guard here if he can. He's trying to get up. You hear him strain. This Maynard is very physically strong. Now he's got his arms separated. It's even weaker for him. It's going to be real difficult. He's got to pull guard here because Maynard's just going to stand up from this spot. And Miller's trying to pull guard. He's trying to slide under. See how he's doing that? He's trying to pull that arm down and slide under. La I mean, the kid's game. I mean, he grabs a hold of that foot again. He's trying to step over and, and complete this, but Maynard's just so strong. And you know what? They're both real slippery now, too, which makes it even more difficult. Look at this. Miller's trying so hard here. Well, all the St. Edwards Eagles in attendance here tonight have to be impressed with the alum Gray Maynard. Big punches by Maynard. The two-time Ohio State champion who started wrestling at age three. Miller's got to be careful here because he doesn't have any control over Maynard. Maynard's on the ground with him, but there, there's no control here whatsoever. It's just Maynard's decision to stand up. If he wants to get up and out of it, he's done. But he's choosing to stay down. This is a great opportunity for Miller. It's just he's so tired right now, and he's taking so much punishment. See, you know, if, if Maynard wanted to at any time, he could have got out of there. Gray Maynard looks at the clock. He is going to remain unbeaten in his mixed martial arts career. And he is about 15 seconds away from snapping the eight-fight win streak of New Jersey's Jim Miller. Good performance to start things out here tonight in Ohio. The bully. Rashad Evans, his collegiate teammate, up clapping, cheering on his good friend. Take a look at our fight replay, Joe, brought to you by Bud Light. The difference is drinkability. And here's a nice straight right hand there and a good couple of body shots as well. Maynard just really utilizing his wrestling, keeping this fight on its feet and, and using his boxing. And here, here's towards the end of the fight. Jim Miller just taking some vicious shots from Maynard. Okay. Yeah. Nothing to be ashamed of if you're Jim Miller. Although he's not happy. Bruce Buffer has the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of action, we go to the judges' scorecards for decision. All three judges score this contest 30 27, declaring the winner by unanimous decision. Gray, the bully, Maynard. Here's Joe. All right, I'm here. With, I'm here with a very happy Gray Maynard. Gray, excellent performance. You really utilized your wrestling to keep this fight on the feet, on the feet, and use your boxing. Was that the game plan coming in here tonight? Yeah, that was the game plan. Hey, Gil, come here. This guy got my hands going. I've been with him about a year. This guy did it for me. What's his name? Oh, my hand. It's Gil Martinez. Oh. He's the man. Well, let's take a look at some of his handiwork on the big screen because your boxing looked outstanding tonight. Here's a beautiful straight right. Hey, Gil, explain this. He explains it better. <laughs> well, we worked on that uh, lead right hand a lot. We knew that uh, he gets a little wild, so we needed him to keep his chin down. Um, straight right hands, leads. Uh, I guess the left hand, the fighter, you know, that works a lot, so we worked on those things. Well, it was obviously a successful training camp. He did a great job against a real tough guy. Ohio, I love you. There's a state championship going on today. St. Edwards is in it. That's my school. 
I love this state, a bunch of blue collar, hard working people. Congratulations, great fight. Great mayor, ladies and gentlemen. The proud St. Edward Eagle and Ohio State wrestling champion remains unbeaten in his mixed martial arts career. The bully Gray Maynard and the former UFC welterweight champion, the legend Matt Hughes. And yes, it's official very soon. Hughes and Sarah will finally meet.